right now, hundreds of law enforcement officers are looking for the suspect in the main shooting that killed at least 18 people and hurt 13 others last night. Most of the search efforts tonight revolved around a house in Bowdoin, Maine. Uh, that's a town east of Lewiston where the killings happened. Police surrounded a property tied to the suspect, Robert Card. Law enforcement, who we're told, has since left that area. ABC News reports it's not expected that Card is going to be found there. ABC is also reporting Card is linked to the restaurant and bowling alley where he killed people. Law enforcement believe the attacks were not completely random. Again, Card is still at large, and investigators say he is armed and dangerous. Now, hours before that tragedy happened in Maine last night, a Minnesota-based group hosted a discussion on preventing gun violence. Members of Protect Minnesota sat down with people to talk about this in Duluth. Ben Henry has more on their message. How was yesterday? It was um, interesting and tragic timing. Maggie Emery is talking about a day of mixed emotions. We got some really strong responses from gun violence prevention candidates. Wednesday afternoon, as executive director of Protect Minnesota, a nonprofit focused on preventing gun violence. It was a really great session. She led a roundtable discussion about their work in Duluth. Hours later, she learned of the mass shooting in Maine. We were all feeling really, really hopeful leaving that event um, until, you know, just a few hours later we got this really, really scary and tragic news. Investigators say at least 18 people were killed by 40-year-old Robert Card. Card, an Army reservist, according to a defense official, was behaving erratically over the summer and out of concern for Card's safety, was taken to a mental health facility for evaluation. We don't have to live like this. Emery says as more information is learned, it will help shape future conversations about policy and practices here at home. We always talk about when events like this happen, how can we make sure that folks who are in crisis don't have their hands on a firearm at a time like this. We always want to see what uh, what was missed. Vice President of the Minnesota Gun Owners Caucus, Rob Doerr, has similar feelings. We're very anxious to see what could have been done to prevent this and uh, and you know what responsible gun owners can do to help uh, intercede with those ones who they can recognize are in crisis. Both agree. These talks need to continue. While these types of events shock the conscience, uh, the, the, the conversation around reducing gun-related uh, deaths is much broader than just mass shootings. I'm also hopeful that we can keep doing the work in um, shaping the narrative around gun violence so that folks know that it's not just these preventable tragedies, it's hundreds of other small preventable tragedies every day of the year. New gun laws went into effect in Minnesota on August 1st. They include universal background checks and a red flag law that allows law enforcement to intervene when someone is at high risk of hurting themselves or others. Maine does not have a red flag law. Protect Minnesota also wanted to remind folks that the 988 Suicide and Crisis Lifeline is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, every day of the year. It's free to call and people get connected to local resources, or Kevin, just an avenue to talk. Yeah, important information, Ben Henry. Of course, we will be tracking developments in Maine as they happen. Look for updates on the search for the suspect here on air and online on your 24-hour